Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Tom Spark and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be comparing some of the private email options out there in 2022. What is the best one to use? I'm going to be briefly running through most of the options out there, giving you some of my thoughts on each one and helping you decide which is the best fit for you. Now guys, before you start watching this video, if you want to help support me and videos like these that are pretty much totally objective, you can help support the channel through other ways. You could click on some of the links in my description. I have some of my favorite products there, including a brand that I partnered up to have this pretty psychedelic shirt. I also have my recommended VPN option, recommended anti-docs tool, and other things in the description down below, as well as promo codes and discounts for those things. So without further ado, let's get in to the video. All right, guys, so what is the best private email provider? What is the best encrypted email provider? Well, one of the reasons you want encrypted email is just to kind of get away from Google. You don't really want your emails being read by Google and being used for advertising. So you want an encrypted email service that is going to give you more privacy and pretty much the same features as something like Gmail would give you. So it's easy to use, convenient, has desktop and mobile applications and that kind of stuff, right? And you don't want to pay that much money to break the bank. So what are some of the options out there, guys? Well, number one is an encrypted email service called Private Mail. Now, Private Mail is actually a service run by none other than TorGuard VPN, which means that it's an insanely well-trusted brand name. Um, lots of you guys on the channel like TorGuard, and lots of people on the channel use Private Mail as well, because I do think it is one of my favorite services out there in terms of encrypted email for several reasons. And we'll talk about those right now. So first off, um, private mail is probably the cheapest option, no questions asked compared to any encrypted email provider. And what do I mean by that? Well, basically it's a paid service that you can get completely free access to. You get 10 gigabytes and it's $9 a month. However, if you make a new account and buy a year of TorGuard VPN, you could actually get private mail included for free. As you can see here, you pick the private mail slash VPN bundle that includes TorGuard VPN. Use the code SPARKMAIL. You'll get 50% off that and you could pretty much get it for $30 a year, which is roughly what TorGuard costs without even adding that email included. Additionally, you could go for triannual, which is a three year deal. And you could get three years of TorGuard plus private mail for $93. Other competitors like Proton Mail cost around $200 for one year. So as you can see, this one is the cheapest, no questions asked. Amazing deal. And that's probably the biggest reason why you should use it. Now, if we talk about some of the other things of the service, well, it's not perfect. One of the things is that I do believe that private mail does need a little bit more development. Sometimes using the application, it can feel a little bit half-baked in some ways. There's some features missing that you might miss from other email services. For example, you can't unsubscribe from certain marketing emails or emails that way, which some other v uh, services let you do, some of the other email services. And it just doesn't have too many updates. I think it's kind of more of like a side project for TorGuard, but overall it still works just fine as a basic email client. The interface is decent on both mobile and PC. It just doesn't have a ton of updates coming out for it, and I kind of wish they put a little bit more updates and effort into it. Um, but since you get it pretty much for free with TorGuard, I could kind of see that you know they're not putting tons of money or making tons of money with it. It's just kind of like an additional kind of component that you could get with a pretty good service with TorGuard VPN. So that's kind of my thoughts on private mail. Definitely one of the best deals out there. Additionally, one of the cooler things about private mail now is that it actually has an included encrypted chat option called Rocket Chat. They're kind of licensing that to make it an additional value proposition for private mail users. So you could create little custom chat rooms with Rocket Chat, which is an open source privacy friendly chat platform. Kind of like an alternative to discord you can make your own little chat programs with there with other users and stuff like that and they don't even have to be private mail users you could just invite them into your kind of custom little chat room which is kind of cool next up we could talk about none other than c templar and c templar definitely isn't as well known as some other options out there but it does have its own little cult following in order to gain access access to c templar for the free model you do need an invitation so you could ping them on social media or even ask them for a free thing However, the main package is going to be its prime um, kind of package here. But even there, you can see that for $8 a month, you only get five gigabytes of storage. 
And as I showed you with um, Tor cards, you get 10 gigabytes and it's gonna be pretty much included within the subscription. Um, that said, um, C Templar does give you some things that private mail doesn't. Like for example, you get a custom domain, um, which I do not believe you get with private mail. Um, but overall, C Templar, what makes it good? Well, I would say that it kind of has that fully fleshed out email feel to it. It's clearly a team working solely on this, I do believe, and it's a good email client and feels more like they put more thought into it. That said, actually, I do think that it is a little bit more buggy for me for some reasons. The dark mode just has never worked well. Um, if you see, um, you could click on this, and for some reason, this just is kind of bugging out here. I'm not sure uh, why. I don't have my dark mode add-on on. Um, it just kind of, sometimes the interface is kind of buggy there. It just doesn't work right. And I've never had those problems with private mail. So to see Templar, I mean, the interface looks cooler and has more thought into it maybe, but it also is more buggy in terms of its interface. So that's definitely kind of a con. That said, people do like C Templar and I do think it's a pretty solid service overall. Just more expensive, a little bit more buggy, but perhaps has a little bit more uh, updates and things like that. One thing I didn't like about C Templar was that I also have noticed that there has been more downtime than with private mail. Uh, Seam Templar was getting like DDoSed a while ago and it, pretty much I couldn't access my email account on some days, which was really annoying. I don't think that's happening too much anymore, but it was something that kind of soured my experience with it. Next up, we can talk about Proton Mail, and this is definitely probably the most popular option out there. Probably the company that's gotten a big enough name uh, for itself. It's really popular among certain YouTubers who like to promote it. It has big social media communities as well. And overall, it's not a bad service um, in totality. I've never really used it as a mean email service or used it too much. Um, I just kind of wanted to mention because it is a big service out there. I do think it's a bit pricey, um, especially if you get it with Proton. Like I said before, if you want Proton VPN and Proton Mail, it's definitely going to get pretty pricey. So it's something to consider. Um, they pretty much have all the same kind of things as with Private Mail and C Templar. Um, so it's a decent service. I'm not a huge fan of the invoicing system though. Um, if you like kind of cancel your service or you stop paying, it just kind of racks up those bills and the credit system and the invoicing system gets really confusing, which makes it so I can't even use some of my old accounts and I don't like their invoicing system. They said, um, I think they were going to rework that or something, but I'm not sure when. And my experience working with the team has kind of been a hit or a miss. Sometimes they're really friendly and respond to my emails and seem like they want to work with me in the channel to improve their service. And then sometimes they also don't reply to me either um, and seem kind of mad that I'm trying to give them my feedback on their service. So it's kind of a hit or miss there um, with the team, um, at least in my experience. Um, but it is one of the more popular services. That said, it's also had some controversies since it is the most popular service. They've had to work with specific law agencies and give out what information they could on specific users. And this did get them a lot of criticism since some of the information given out, whatever it was, was on some like climate activists. There's a lot of controversy with this one. Um, but again, it is probably because it's one of the bigger ones out there. Next up, we could talk about none other than Tutanota. Now, Tutanota is a Germany-based email provider, and this one has a pretty solid reputation. It's got a really good interface, actually, and I do like how you can unsubscribe from certain things like you can see here, and the interface itself works really well. I like that unsubscribe feature a lot because in one video, I did leak out this email address just because I didn't really care. It's not my main email address. I don't even pay for it. I mostly just use it for creating VPN accounts anonymously so VPNs don't give me special treatment. I did leak out this email address in one of the videos. And then after that, I started getting tons of gay porn uh, messages. With Tutanota, it's very easy to just unsubscribe from all those and block all those out. So it wasn't an issue itself. And I don't even use this email hardly ever. So it's more just funny to think that someone went to that link to sign me up to like 30 gay porn sites. When in fact, I don't even use this email. That said, I do really like this service. And it's I really like how it's actually pretty generous with this free model. And that said, the premium model is kind of limited in some of its things. It doesn't give you as much storage as some of the other options. And it might not be as feature rich um, in some ways. But you do get the custom domain and some of the other standard things. 
Um, so it's definitely a solid one overall. So guys, which email should you pick? Well, if you want to get an email and hardly pay anything and get the most storage, I would go for private mail and you can find the link in the description or use my code SPARKMAIL to get it pretty much free with a year of TorGuard VPN. You can get three years of TorGuard plus private mail premium access for around $90, which is the best deal in the industry. Outside of that, I would recommend Tutanota as another good free option since a free plan there is extremely generous and probably sufficient for most people. That said, Scene Templar is also kind of a cool option with its own kind of look and feel. And ProtonMail is one of the more popular options out there that clearly shows they've put a lot of work into the product. So it's kind of just up to you on which one you would choose. For me, I kind of just use a pr uh, private mail as my main one as a kind of a side email service. And I don't really care about some of these things like custom domains or aliases or anything like that. So for me, it works pretty much fine. But if you're someone who's looking for more of a power user experience, maybe check out something like C Templar or even Tutanota. Depending on C Templar, it could be buggy for you or not, depending on, you know, if you want to try it out. I have some visual bugs with it, but Tutanota, even though you get less storage, does give you that custom domain, and it's a pretty solid one overall. I just kind of wish that Private Mail had a little bit more development and a little bit more of those key features added in, and I think it would be pretty much a hands-down recommendation for me. I do recommend it here on the channel mostly because I do think the team does plan to push out some of the updates I've been suggesting to them and they seem really receptive to some of the criticism I've given to them and they want to put them into the product soon. So hopefully by the end of this year we'll see some of those competitive elements added, uh, maybe a rework on the UI for mobile, adding more clarity between the different emails as well as the unsubscription feature which would be really cool. Anyways guys, that's it for me on this video and I'll see you again very soon.